The month of October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. According to some statistics shared by the Texas Advocacy Project, one in three Texans will experience domestic violence in their lifetime. Girls and women between the ages of 16 and 24 are the most likely to experience intimate partner violence. Yeah, and joining us today is Connie Stogner from SAFE. Thank you so much for being here with us, Connie. Yeah, happy to be here. All right, so let's get right into it. What are some of the signs that you or someone you might know might be in a domestic violence relationship? Yeah, I think um, some of the warning signs to look out for are um, certainly um, jealousy, kind of extreme jealousy. And, um, you know, in this day and age, sort of needing to know where you go all the time, tracking you on your phone and um, just wanting that constant response through, through your device. Um, Isolation is a big one. If someone is trying to isolate you from your friends or your family, sort of always finding reasons why you shouldn't be able to go be with friends and family, that's a big red flag. Um, I think the other thing, a lot of times what you'll see is um, it'll maybe start, it won't start off with the physical abuse. A lot of times it will start off with name calling or um, sort of degrading comments, um, and then it'll escalate to the physical violence. And Connie, your organization offers so many different types of help for people out there. So if you wouldn't mind just sharing what some of those resources are that SAFE is able to provide. Sure. Um, first and foremost, I think it's really important that people know that we have um, an incredible uh, hotline called the SAFE line that is phone calls, text, and chat. And it is completely confidential. So, you know, if you just have concerns about your relationship or you're not sure what what's going on, you can call and talk to someone and, and just and, and, and learn more. Um, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And last year, I think we had close to 29,000 contacts. Um, in addition to our hotline, we have emergency shelter. Uh, we have counseling services. We have um, some longer term housing support once folks come in, because sometimes it takes more than, you know, a shelter stay to get stabilized. Um, so often someone who's been the victim of domestic violence may maybe they've been um, um, controlled so much that they haven't been allowed to work or go to school so sometimes it takes longer to get on your feet um, we have all kinds of um, uh, support in terms of um, helping with education plans or child care plans or um, financial support uh, yeah so lots and lots of services and 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 lots of wonderful prevention services too yeah and Connie you know there are so many people who are in domestic violence situations who you know, it's hard for them to admit that they're in those situations or that, you know, asking for that help. What sort of outreach um, does your organization do, not only during Domestic Violence Awareness Month, but just year round to really reach as many people as possible? Yeah, um, well, we'll go and talk to, to churches. We'll go and talk to any organization that wants to hear from us. Sometimes we'll do larger um, uh, sort of public outreach campaigns where we'll have billboards, making sure folks know how to get a hold of us. Um, you know, so often people find out about us through word of mouth, maybe someone that's used our services before. Um, but yeah, we'll do um, pretty much any and all ways we can to get to get the word out. And before we let you go, Connie, I just wanted to give you a chance to highlight any other resources you would like people out there to know about through SAFE. Um, you know, we really do have some wonderful prevention programs. I think prevention is key. Um, you know, so often today, when you, you hear about um, mass shootings or gun violence, it stems back from domestic violence. So the more we can do some really great prevention work around domestic violence and sexual assault and those types of things, then we, um, um, you know, we can really stop all sorts of um, terrible things in our community, in particular gun violence. When you talk about prevention, what do those conversations look like? Can you give us an example, walk us through what you or one of your colleagues might say to somebody who you are trying to really get to before it escalates to being domestic violence? Yeah, um, we uh, we have a fabulous prevention program um, called Expect Respect and uh, works with teens. And it's really about promoting healthy relationships and helping people understand what does respect, respectful communication look like? Um, what is What does it look like if somebody is using power and control over you versus having that sort of more um, equitable type of relationship? Um, yeah, and, and, and really pointing out some of those warning signs that we talked about earlier. Connie, we will leave the conversation there, but we appreciate you so much uh, coming on this morning and sharing this very important information. We hope it connects with people out there. And uh, again, appreciate you joining us to talk about all this. Yeah, happy to do so. Thanks for having me. And we also want to remind everybody out there, if you need to report domestic violence, you can call the 24-7 SAFE hotline. The number is 512-267-7233. Connie, thanks again for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you.